My name is Catherine Addy. I have the honor of being the president of Tunxis. And it is also my honor to welcome everybody and tell you how glad we are as a college that you are here and have been looking forward to this opening day. Um, the meetings are one thing, but the hamburgers and hot dogs are outstanding. So make sure you stick around for lunch when we're done. We have a few things to talk with you about today, but one of the things that I want to do is to start by sharing with you, and this, there's a piece of paper being passed around right now, something I'm calling the Tunxis 10. These are the 10 commandments coming from me to you about your experience here at Tunxis. So I wanted to go through them briefly because they represent not only what we expect from ourselves on your behalf, but also what this college and what I expect from you as students. You will note at the top, the very first one is I will go to class and do all required assignments. That sounds so obvious, but you know, it is so easy when you get up in the morning or when you have a bad day or when nobody's looking over your shoulder to say, oh, I'm gonna skip class today, I'll, I'll catch up next time. Don't, do not do that. It's a bad habit. It will get you in a hole deeper than anything you can ever imagine. You will not be a successful student or you will not achieve your goals if you don't go to class and do the required assignments. So that is the number one commandment while you are a student at Tunxis. The second one is that you will participate in class activities and discussions. That obviously goes with the first one. You can't participate if you're not there. So pay attention to those two and the third one will be obvious. You won't need to even be tempted to cheat on anything because you've already done the work that's required. So the third one will be irrelevant in your experience. I will not steal another's words, ideas, or material goods. I'm speaking on this one from the point of view of somebody who used to teach English. Everybody's favorite subject, right? What students don't realize is that anytime you copy somebody else's words and put them down as your own, that is stealing. Don't do it. It is so easy now to cut and paste and go to the internet and go to Wikipedia and just write down anything that somebody else has said and pass it off as your own. That is cheating, that is stealing, don't do it. I will not steal another's words, ideas, or material goods. I will treat my professors with respect. There may be times when you hear things said in class that you don't agree with. If that's fine. That's the point of hearing from other people and being exposed to other ideas. But there is a way to disagree respectfully. We don't need to do name calling. We don't need to do put downs. We don't need to do public shaming. Any of those things that are tempting and are becoming more and more a part of our social interactions. Treating our professors with respect and they will treat you with respect as well. Along with that goes treating everybody on this campus with respect and treating each other with respect. Everybody is working as hard as you are to be here and they deserve credit for that. So this is where that golden rule, do unto others, really comes into play. I will do my best to participate in college events and activities. We have a lot of things that go on here outside of the classroom. Lots of clubs, lots of special <clears throat> guest lectures, a lot of musical programs, our little tiny theater right next door over that wall. Um, we have a lot of really entertaining, interesting, informative events that happen on campus. So whenever you can, please participate. The ninth item, I will complete my degree or certificate. It is really easy, again, in our current environment to get distracted and say, oh, I don't have the energy to do that now. I'll come back to it later. I'm not coming back next semester. I'll come back next year. Anytime we interrupt the flow, then it gets harder and harder to go back. So put completion, getting a degree, a certificate, whatever credential you think you need or want, put that at the top of your list of things to remember to do while you're a student. And finally, this is what they're all about. You are the ones who will create your own future. If you are a successful student, chances are you will get to do more of the things that you want to do. 
getting a degree is like getting your ticket punched when you go into a theater event or something or into a concert. It says to other people, here's somebody who has had the self-discipline and has spent the time and has had a goal and has stuck to it. So create the future that you want for yourself. We are here to help you. We are here to guide you. We're here to kick you in the rear to get you going in the right direction if you stray. We are here to help and we want to do that, but it's up to you. Okay, end of sermon. I, I really, my message is that we're glad you're here. We really do want to be a part of your experience um, at every level, and we hope that you enjoy it. And listen to your compadres here who have been through a few things and may have some good advice to help you avoid some mistakes that they may or may not have made. Mostly that they didn't make, but they saw others make, right? Yeah, okay. So thank you. With that, I'm going to introduce Jim Revellini, who has an adventure for you to follow along with. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? All right, even another cup of coffee, but that's, uh, that's okay. All right, uh, welcome to Tungsis. I hope you're having a good time so far. I know the day is going to be very informative and fun for you. Um, we're adding uh, another sort of thing to this day which you can participate in. You won't hear this in your classes a lot, but I'd like you to get out your cell phones. Um, <laughs> if you're on Instagram, that would be great. That's basically what this, is, this whole thing is, this little exercise is based on. Um, if you don't do Instagram, Facebook, if you use something else, try it with that. I don't know what everybody's using these days. But anyways, if you go to tungsis.edu slash I, I for Instagram, You'll see some information there or like sort of, you know, the, the rules or the, the thing that we'd like you to do. I'm calling it an Instagram scavenger hunt, call it what you like. Uh, work alone or with a small team. When you locate something from the scavenger list, uh, use Instagram to take a photo representing your find. You're going to kind of do this throughout the day. We're going to do the first one here today as a group um, just to sort of like get us moving, get us thinking. Um, before you submit the picture, it should give you an opportunity to tag uh, the location. So if you have location services on, uh, Tungsis Community College should come up automatically for you. Uh, but put, type it in, Tungsis, if not, T-U-N-X-I-S. Uh, optionally, you can hashtag your posts from today uh, with the hashtag that we're suggesting for each item on the list. There's only five. Um, but ideally, what we're going to wind up with at the end of this is sort of a collection uh, where you're kind of sharing the experience, your experience, and, and seeing what other people are seeing today, um, you know, on one of your first days here. Um, and if you don't want to do, you know, participate, you can always still get onto Instagram later, check out these hashtags that I'm going to mention in a second. So the first one is make a new friend. I'd like you to just take a second right now, say hello to somebody that's sitting near you, around you, you know, turn around, stand up. What's your name? What do you like? What do you do? Yeah, just say hi. Get talking to each other a little bit. Um, and when you get back to Instagramming, I'd like you to take a picture of your new friend or something that they brought with them today, something interesting that represents them, and just hashtag it Tungsis people. Tungsis, uh, T-U-N-X-I-S P-P-L, hashtag Tungsis people. Um, so that's going to be the one for the first part of the day. Here's some of the other ones. In case you don't bring this up on your phone, I'm just going to go over them real quick. Number two, get some perspective. Snap a picture from an interesting angle or viewpoint. You might lay on the ground. You might get insanely close to somebody's shoelace. Uh, you might face into the sun and catch some of the glare. Whatever. Down one of the hallways, we have a lot of beautiful buildings. So please, uh, you know, take some time. Take a picture of something that you find interesting on campus and hashtag that, Tungsis Views. Um, number three, Tungsis Places. Anywhere where you find on campus today that you think is going to be an important place to remember, a place where you expect to find yourself at some point during the year, maybe it's the Veterans Oasis, maybe it's the, um, maybe it's the Student um, Activity Center, maybe it's the Registration Office because you're signing up a lot. Whatever you're finding important or memorable, something that you want to come back to, snap a picture of that, hashtag Tungsis Places. Number four is you're now a videographer, you are the director for 15 seconds, you have 15 seconds of fame. Please hashtag that one, Tungsis Vids, V-I-D-S. 
And the last one is your call. Take a picture of whatever you like. Again, please just try to tag it, Tunxis Community College for the location. That'll really help us see what everybody's seeing today, see what you like, see what you found, see what you found interesting, and then everybody else can share in that experience. So I thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a great day. I'm the webmaster for the college. Uh, if you find anything on the website that needs tuning up, webmaster at tungsys.edu, hit me up. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and I'm always looking for ideas for improvements, suggestions, and stuff like that. That's what Tungsys is about. We're always looking to incorporate your ideas and you know become a better college for you, something that you are a part of. So I'm gonna now pass the microphone to Patrice Hamilton, who's gonna take you through the next part of the orientation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi guys. Okay, so good morning. Welcome to Tunxis. And I'd like to introduce this great panel of students. First of all, in the blue shirt, we have Andrew Albert. He is a liberal arts and sciences major entering his final two semesters at Tunxis. He is a member of the college's honor society, Phi Theta Kappa, and for the past two years has served as, the, as a member of the community outreach club at Tunxis. In addition, that's not enough, Andrew is president of the Student Government Association. After graduating from Tunxis, he plans to transfer to Southern Connecticut State University and pursue a BSN in nursing. So please give a hand for our Andrew Albert. Next we have Paige Casey. Paige recently graduated from Tunxis with a certificate and associate's degree in early childhood education. She currently works in the admissions office at Tunxis and at the Plainfield YMCA in childcare. So you may have seen her in either one of those locations. Currently, she is taking classes at Tunxis to fulfill her double major requirements in sociology and plans to transfer to Eastern Connecticut State University this January to earn a bachelor's degree and become a certified ECE teacher. And here's a fun little note. Um, Paige it completed a full circle here at Tunxis because she attended our preschool on campus when she was just a little toddler running around. And now she just recently graduated with the class of 2016, getting an early childhood education degree. So this girl has been here from the time she was in diapers to the time she held a degree. So this is Paige, please welcome her. Okay, now we have Hannah Smith. Hannah graduated from Tungsis Community College in May 2014 with an associate's degree in business administration. She then transferred to Central Connecticut State University where she received her bachelor's degree in business management in May 2016, so she just is a recent graduate. Since 2013, Hannah has been a student worker in the admissions and records office at Tunxis, so you may have encountered her there. She likes her job at the college and especially enjoys helping our students be successful. In her spare time, she likes to do what I'll bet like 95% of you guys like to do, travel and relax at the beach. So please welcome Hannah Smith. And last but not least, this is Nick Teeling. Nick is also um, a former student of mine, so I had the pleasure of having Nick in my classroom. He raised the level of everybody in there, in my opinion. Um, he is entering his final semester here at Tungsis. While at Tungsis, he served as the president of the Community Outreach Club, vice president of student government, and has helped start a food pantry on campus. After this semester, he plans on transferring to Central Connecticut State University to study marketing and work towards breaking into the fashion industry. So please welcome Nick Taylor. All right, so what I'm gonna do is ask a question and then anybody on the panel can kind of pipe in, more than one person can give their perspectives on answering that question. And then in the last 20 minutes of this presentation, I'm gonna open it up for questions from you, the audience. So as you're listening, you know, if you think of a question, hold on to it because, you know, chances are if you have that question, probably someone else does and it would be wonderful to hear, you know, just any questions that we, w we didn't go over, okay? This is a good time to ask it. Last presentation, you know, people, there were a lot of questions, but then about five people came up to me with questions. And I was like, oh, I wish you'd ask that in front of everyone. So if you have a question, ask it at the end. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna throw out to you guys is what are some of the things that brought you to Tungsis Community College? 
So one of the reasons I came to here was because the classes are small. So I think my biggest class that I ever had here had a max of like 25 other kids. And it was really helpful because the teacher was able to answer your questions and you kind of got like on a personal level with them. Um, it was just really helpful to be able to sit in a smaller classroom and not feel overwhelmed while you're giving a presentation or asking a question or just sitting there in class in general. It wasn't too, too much or too stressful to be a part of it. <laughs> Bring it close to you because you know um, So one of the reasons I came to Tungsys was because it was a lot cheaper from other colleges. Um, I did, still didn't know what I wanted to do, so um, I was able to get a few classes to see if I liked them, and then I got into the program of business administration because I liked the business classes, and it was a lot cheaper than going to a four-year college and ha t having to take out loans um, and having financial aid, so I was able to, um, to save my money a little bit. Um, one of the things that kind of was attractive about Tungsys is that it was close to home, so you didn't have to have such a um, big change in terms of where you're going to be living and, you know, all your friend groups and things like that while you're kind of new to the whole college experience. So, you know, in addition to being affordable and having the smaller class sizes and whatnot, it's, it's nice, you know, being able to commute to campus while you're still new to everything and you're still trying to figure out what you want to do because, you know, most of the students that come here kind of don't have it all figured out yet so it's just one less thing you have to worry about um, and it's another way for you to be able to save money is that you know you're not moving out and paying that you know cost of either an apartment or um, you know the fee that it, they charge to live on campus you know you kind of can just come here and commute and it's a lot easier so you guys brought up great points um, I'm a mother of two college students and last year my daughter went to UConn and even though she got a scholarship it was still going to cost us about 15 grand and a lot of her classes had like 300 people in them right 15 grand for 300 people and although UConn's a great school and a lot of people really love the dorm experience not everybody does she didn't like it and so where do you think she's going now she's going to Tungsys she chose it because it's cheaper and because it's smaller classes, just the stuff that you guys brought up. And you know, she's gonna get her core stuff done and then transfer to another university that she thinks will better fit her. So coming here, it's a great bang for your buck, but there's other great things about here too. And one of those is the smaller classes and the more intimate environment. I totally agree with you guys. Okay, so my next question is, what kind of time commitment do you have to make as a college student? Like, how does college affect your day-to-day -day life? As a college student, um, your time commitments kind of change a bit. Um, it's not like high school where you get out at two, and hang out for a couple hours, blow off homework, um, and then hope to scrub something down at 10 o'clock at night before you go in the next day. Um, you kind of have to be a little bit more diligent about your work. Um, you have to be more independent here at college. Um, so things are on you. It's about scheduling things around um, what's going on in your life. Um, yeah. Sorry. It's all right. Um, I'll just, I'm just going to project more. Um, so it's about um, being much more independent and uh, figuring out how your life works and things that go on. Um, as somebody who's gone to college here for now, going on my third year now, um, I've been able to keep a job, keep many different social uh, social connections with friends, um, and still produce work at the level that I think is acceptable for myself. Um, it's totally able to, you're going to be totally able to balance it, I promise. You just need to figure out what pace you want to go at and go at that pace. Um, college is the first time in your school experience where you're going to be in the driver's seat. Um, so for a long time going to high school, um, somebody was telling you what to do and somebody was picking classes for you and what would be best in that schedule. But this is the time now where you can kind of figure things out and go at your own pace. If you don't like morning classes, don't take them. You don't have to do it. You don't have to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to come to school anymore. You can wake up at 11 o'clock in the morning and kind of doze around and then come to school at 1 o'clock. And if that's how you're going to work and that's how you operate, then do that. Figure out what works best for you. And it's going to take a ton of stress off. It's going to make things so much easier, I promise. By the way, if anybody wants this microphone, I can give it to you if you'd rather have it. And as long as you keep it pointed down, it seems to be OK. Would anybody like it? All right, so the question had to do with um, what kind of, how does it affect your day-to-day -day life? What kind of commitment does it 
Um, in terms of like day to day life and how the college experience and, and you know going to college, especially being a commuting school, um, impact your day to day life. Um, you know, I guess that you have to kind of calculate in some time to commute to the college and whatnot, and you also have to be able to devote time to you know trying to go to the library or wherever you want to study, whether it be like a Starbucks or a, you know this library on campus or the student resource center or whatever. You need to devote that time to kind of. Um, increase that percentage of your of your day going towards school but like nick was saying you know it's it's pretty manageable and you kind of get into like a routine and you kind of decide if you're going to keep your old job or get a new job and um, work you know for a lot of people it ends up taking a back seat but also one of the things that tongues us is that a lot of our students are um you know going here because of their work schedules so it's not necessarily going to change the percentages of your day in terms of what you devote to work or family or school all the time. It just kind of depends on, you know, you as a person finding, you know, what works for you and that's going to kind of alter your day to day life. But I mean, it's, it's pretty manageable between work and school and friends and whatnot. So, you know, the biggest thing is not to stress out about it and just look for the help if you need it, um, you know, with all the resources we're going to kind of talk about later on. Anybody else? You guys all set? Yeah, that brings up a good point too. Um, you know, we professors also advise students, and one of the things you want to think about is how many classes can you reasonably take that can fit together with your family and work um, commitments, right? Sometimes it's great to take four classes, but if you've got, you know, a, a job in which it's, you know, 30 hours a week, four classes might be too tough, and you don't want to set yourself up for failure. You want to set yourself up for success. You may say, I'm just going to take three classes because I've got. I've got a job commitment and I need that, you know, I need that money and so I'll take one last class and I would like to take so that I do well in both areas, right? If you overload yourself and you don't do well in your in your schoolwork, you might think, oh wow, you know, this isn't right for me, I can't do this. And you can do it. It's just you gotta make sure you don't overload yourself too. So, you know, th this first semester you're gonna see how much, you know, can I cut back at my work? Should I, do I not need to cut back at work, my work? Should I cut back on the amount of classes I take next time? Should I add classes? Think about, you know, what you can reasonably juggle and still have a good quality of life. Okay, so um, what are some strategies that you guys use to manage this juggling act? Because most of our students have it, right? You've got family, you've got work, you've got school. So how, what are some strategies that you've come up with to help manage that juggling act? So one thing that I do to manage everything is I keep a planner. It helps stay organized just to keep everything on track. Um, a lot of the professors will give you a syllabus and tell you to read it. They don't necessarily repeat um, when stuff is due unless it's like a major project. So having everything written down definitely is helpful. And then just being organized like with um, just your school supplies such as like folders and whatnot because a lot of professors will hand you packets and they want you to bring them to class on top of all the notes. So it's just really important to stay organized. Any other strategies? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that Paige was kind of talking about was being organized and kind of going hand in hand with that is, you know, your time management and how you need to adjust, you know, like we kind of discussed in the last question, where you're devoting your time to. Um, you know, it's, it's really tempting to kind of slack off because you have all this free time and you don't really know what to do with it. You know, you're not used to being able to just pick your own schedule and, you know, go to classes when you want to go to classes and pick which classes you're taking and whatnot. So you need to really focus on getting some good time management skills as well um, so that you can stay organized in the classroom, but also stay organized in terms of your schedule and, you know, not putting too much on your plate for a certain day or things like that because you know kind of like what Professor Hamilton was saying you know there was one semester where I decided I was going to take five classes and I don't have a job that lets me um, cut back on my hours so for me that was really difficult because I was trying to juggle five classes and a full-time job and then you're commuting to school and you're still you know kind of part of, part of the family at home so you're trying to juggle that as well so it can kind of become overwhelming if you don't you know, be honest with yourself and kind of say, okay, well, let me do what I can do and, and you know, not overload the plate. Um, so definitely time management and like Paige was saying, organization. But, you know, don't, you know, I don't want to freak you guys out or anything. Like Nick was saying, it, it is manageable. It's just you need to, you know, find that right, you know, 
happy medium as you work your way through that first semester so that you can prepare yourselves for the next semesters coming up. So. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so like Nick was saying also earlier, that it's not like high school where um, like you go eight hours a day and then you come home and do homework for the night and then the next day the homework's done. The classes are only about three hours a week that you meet in class and then you're, you have to be independent and do your own work on, um, on your own time throughout the week. And you have to know when assignments are due and kind of manage that time um, independently of when you're gonna get your work done. Okay, great. Um, all right, so when I read their biographies, I think we could all see that these students got involved, right? They took advantage of a lot of the other resources that Tungsys has. You know, there's learning you do in the classroom, and that's important. I mean, I'm a professor, of course, I think it's important. But there's also that other part of that college experience, and, and it's also very important. And so I guess my question is, how have you taken advantage of some of the other resources here at Tungsys, either clubs or organizations, or or support centers or advising or anything like that. Okay, so I think um, probably the big game changer for me here at Tungsys and what really settled me in um, to this whole community um, and getting to know a bunch of different people on campus was getting involved in clubs. Um, I remember my first semester, I took this attitude that I was gonna talk to nobody I was gonna sit in the back of class next to the outlet so I could charge my phone the entire time. Um, I was going to make no friends and go home and get some homework done, but kind of just really just ride it out because I wasn't really sure what I was doing and I wasn't sure of my environment, all these other things. Um, but this is just such a bad and a sour attitude to take. There's a lot of great people here on campus that are either they're in the same position or, as you are in or were in the same position as you. Um, whether you're coming from high school or returning to school um, that are going to be there that want to get to know you and you can make friends with um, and a great way to do this is to get involved with clubs. I got involved with the Community Outreach Club because a professor thought that I should be president of her club <laughs> so um, I was kind of just thrown into that and then I was kind of just thrown into SGA too um, last year um, because somebody because of different conflicts and somebody had to drop it. So just from these things, I never took a proactive approach to get it, but I think that's one of my biggest regrets was that I didn't do that. And I think I really encourage everybody here to take a proactive approach. Check out the clubs on campus. Um, SGA is awesome, it's a good opportunity. Um, there's gaming clubs, there's a theater club, they always put productions on. Um, you can take a small role in the clubs or you can take a big leadership role if that's something that you're interested in. Um, you can meet a bunch of different people and I think all, all in all, they're awesome to do. Um, so for me, I didn't get involved in any clubs or use any resources. So that's one thing I definitely regret um, looking back. Um, I The first semester I was here, I had another job outside of Tungsys and I kind of just went to class and then went home and worked. And I didn't get involved with anyone. I didn't know anyone. And then the second semester, I got involved. I um, started working in the admissions office. So that's how I got to know more people. Um, so I did. So I do wish that I got involved with clubs and also use like the academic support center. If, if you need help with um, math or English, the academic support center, they're willing to help you out. So um, I do encourage that um, because that's one thing I would probably do differently is get involved with those resources. Anybody else? So just want to get like kind of an idea. How many of you guys are going into your first semester at any college this year, this fall? All right, and then how many of you are returning? Like you're maybe a little bit older or you, you're coming back from a job and doing a career change? All right, so you know we kind of talked about a lot of the clubs and you know extracurricular things you can get involved in on campus. And you know being the president of SGA and having Nick up here as the vice president, you know, we could definitely give you guys information about that and you, we have a Facebook page and, and all those great resources um, and you guys can check out the student lounge um, with your time here. But something else that we need to talk about too is a lot of the resources that Tungsys takes a lot of time and money and the faculty take a lot of their time and you know, 
really get involved with the students here on campus, whether it be with the Academic Support Center or with your faculty advisors. Um, you know, get to know your professors, because the thing is that your professors have a lot of students that they're trying to get to meet, and they can't always approach you themselves. You need to go and approach them, and you make that initial, you know, getting to meet those professors, and then it, you can form a lot of great bonds with a lot of people here. Um, get to know your advisor, that's really important, and they're a great, great resource for you, not only for your time here, but also helping you transition to whatever that next step is for you after Tungsis. And um, finally, one of the things that I kind of didn't do a lot, uh, especially with the semester that I was struggling was, you know, I felt like I didn't want to go get that help at the Academic Support Center. I didn't want to go and, you know, do like the peer tutoring or the, the group activities and things like that. But, you know, you guys, these things are here for a reason because it's been proven that these things help you get more successful, um, especially with your first, you know, look at college so don't be afraid to go and reach out and jump right into those resources because they're here for you you're paying for them you know they're being staffed and utilize them because that's what they're here to do is for you guys so that's a great point um you know how much it costs to get a math tutor or english tutor or science tutor out in the real world at least 20 30 50 bucks an hour you have that here for free and you've paid for it with your student fees so take advantage of that. Let someone help you be successful in your classes. And the other thing is, he talked about that semester where he felt overwhelmed. He took on too much and he was feeling overwhelmed. We have, great, we have a great um, collection of people who advise students and, and counselors who can kind of help you with any emotional issues that you're experiencing throughout the semester. So please take advantage of that too. Don't go it alone. Talk to a professor, go to our counselors. They are here for you and they want to they want to communicate with you before things get too bad, before, because it can be like a downward spiral where you say, I haven't been to class for a little while because I had these things, now I'm afraid to go, now I'm not doing well, oh, I might as well give up. And don't. Go to your professor, go to the counselors, and figure out how we can keep this thing together because we want to help you um, and, you know, keep your education going. So if you experience any rough patches, reach out to your professor or the counselors here because we're here to help you really and truly we are. All right, so um, some of you mentioned some regrets that you had, like, oh, I regret I, I tried to fly under the radar at first, or I regret that I didn't join some clubs. Can you think of any other just mistakes that you made when you were first here because you were a new student, or things that you wish you had known, or anything like that? So when I first started, I thought maybe I could just like skim the chapters that the professor um, assigned to us and just kind of get by that way, but turns out is that you really actually have to read and understand the chapters. Um, a lot of the questions that they ask you on the exams do come from their notes or the book, so it's really important that if you do have access to print them out, they, a lot of teachers will give you lecture notes or PowerPoints, and it's really helpful to have that to study from, um, and it's really good to look over. Even though you've gone over it in class, it's really good to just make sure you comprehend it. Um, and that was one of the mistakes I made is that I didn't really take advantage of that. And I'm really glad that I learned to because it was really helpful in the long run. Good advice. Anybody else? Any mistakes? Um, kind of going along with that is uh, taking these first classes and kind of your intro classes seriously. Um, a lot of people can kind of get away with I don't want to make it sound like bad, but they can kind of get away with skating through those classes and they're happy with getting a B and, and that's great, you know, until you go and you get to those upper level classes. So let's say you're doing like a, I don't know, a, a psych major, right? And you take like intro to psych and English comp and things like that and you kind of skate your way through it. Okay, you slapped off. Well now, you go to those higher level classes and they're going to expect you to know that stuff. You know, those intro courses are intro courses for a reason. They're supposed to prepare you for those upper level courses. and. You know, it's also the same token with the stuff that you're taking here, you may be taking it here so that you can then go transfer somewhere, you have all your core stuff done, and then you're going to finish your degree somewhere else. Well, it's, those are core classes for a reason, they're your core. So when you go to that college, they're going to expect that you at least have a general understanding about what you learned in those classes. And if you don't, it's not that you're going to fail the classes later on, it's just you're going to struggle, you're making it harder on yourself, you know. Um, one of those things that I guess in terms of like a mistake or a regret is, you know, not, uh, not initially setting myself up for 
uh, success, you know, making it harder on myself in terms of procrastinating or, you know, not taking those classes seriously, it, it makes it harder down the road when you are trying to get more serious and now you're, now you're you know, locked in and focused, it's, it's harder now because you have to backtrack to get all that material, you know, that you should have already known and taken care of, so. Another good piece of advice. Anybody else? Mistakes or? You're gonna hear this 100 times, and I'm gonna tell you 101. Do not skip class. Don't do it, just, just don't do it. I know like there's like a fun opportunity you might have to do something else. You don't feel like getting out of bed that morning. Don't do it. It's like easy to do, and once you start, it's like a downward spiral. You get more of them, and like really the feeling in your stomach when like you skip a class and then you go to the next one and you're completely behind and you totally missed that other lecture and now you just feel like a big jerk sitting in the back of class. So just don't do it. You don't have to do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Obviously, as a professor, I love hearing that. <laughs> um, great. Uh, yeah, I like a lot of the stuff that these guys have to say. I think that's the, those are all things I wish somebody had said to me when I first started college. Because these these kinds of mistakes, I mean, they can go back decades, right? Um, let's see. If you could give these students one extra little piece of advice, little nugget of wisdom that you haven't already said, is there anything else you could kind of tell them? say to ask questions in class like don't be afraid because a lot of times other people will have the same questions and then not only are you hurting yourself but you're also like if you ask the question then maybe it'll just make you um, feel better about the assignment and if you don't ask the questions and you do the assignment wrong a lot of the teachers won't they won't have sympathy when they're grading it so it's better to understand it before handing it in yeah. um, I would say so don't procrastinate as Andrew was saying um, for me I wait till the last minute for everything and um, so for like the paper I do it the night before it's due so you have a few the professors give you at least a few weeks to um, to do the paper or do an assignment so I would definitely start ahead of time and don't wait till the last minute because because um, then it also goes back to managing your time and also um, getting a good grade, you know, that you might miss out on. So just um, just manage your time and start ahead of time for assignments. Anything else? I think probably one of my biggest keys to success here, and I think everybody should look into it too, is to really get to know your professors. The professors here are awesome. I like. I can't say enough about how great the professors and the faculty here are. They're just, they're great people. Um, the faculty office, which is right that way, before you get to the library, there's a small brick building there. That's the faculty office. The full-time professors here, they sit in their office with the doors open um, for most of the early day. They have hours closed in the doors usually. They're here to help you. They can be your advisor. Any full-time faculty member here can sit down with you and advise you. They know how to do it, they know what classes you pick out, and they've heard all the problems. Professor Hamilton can attest, I am like in oh, the God, faculty yes. office like the whole time I'm here at Dunks yep. because I have just an awesome relationship um, with not only her, but I have other professors here that are like, I, don't, I consider friends. They're just awesome people. Um, we don't even just talk about classes and schoolwork. Sometimes we just talk about life, um, what's going on, jobs, all these other things. They're awesome people. Take the time to get to know them. They're here to help you. They have awesome advice outside of the classroom for not only their classes, but life, and they've gone through similar experiences. So really, take the time, get to know your professor. They're great people, and they're awesome friends to have. He's so right about that. And it goes both ways. We also get a lot from you students. I mean, it makes our day when students come in and chat with us about stuff. Obviously, when they chat with us about our classes or any issues that are coming up. But like, I remember one time I was talking to Nick, who who's, at the time was a waiter, and he's like, well, if your daughter needs a waitressing job, I know where she can get one. You know? So it goes back and forth. It's not a one-way street. We get a lot from talking with you guys as well. Um, just real quick, I need to build off Nick's point, and I'm going to give you my piece of advice. But um, you know, going along with getting to know your professors, don't hesitate and don't wait 
until you're struggling to get in touch with your professors because this isn't like high school where it's kind of like you know very strict in terms of their hands are tied and they have like certain assignments that they're grading and then that's what your grades based off of you know professors are able to give you extensions on things and they're able to you know give you alternate assignments and they might understand as long as you're proactive and you know getting to know them and and communicating with them and making sure that you're on the same page they're willing to help you out they don't want to see you fail just because you're but you need to go and seek them out they can't always go and seek you out so that's just to kind of build off Nick's point real quick and then um, my one piece of advice to you guys is that although we're telling you to be serious and we want you to be serious and you and you need to be in order to be successful um, don't take it too seriously you know still find that time to kind of have fun you know do those things outside of the campus all together that you enjoy to do you know find that time to get to the gym find that time to do those outdoor things you like to do or you know hang out with your friends and whatnot because if you don't give yourself active actively you know pursue time to kind of decompress and do what you want to do um, you're just going to get burnt out and you're not going to want to come to class and you're going to say oh college isn't for me or you know and it might not be but it might you know it could be and you're just getting burnt out because you're not managing your time correctly and you're not giving yourself that free time so make sure you get enough time to do that as well. Great, thanks. Anybody else? You guys all set? All right, so what I'd like to do is kind of open it up to you guys. If you have a question, stand up and kind of say it, and then I'll repeat it just in case everybody couldn't hear it. Anybody got a question? Not one question? Not everybody jump at once. Yeah, come on. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let me just say a question that I heard from, a, from, a, from our morning earlier group. Somebody asked, what do you do when there's weather issues? We live in New England and you know, there's bound to be snow days and stuff like that. And so they asked the panel, what, what, how do you handle it you know, in terms of cancellations and all that stuff? So could anybody answer that question? So um, everyone has access to their MyComNet account, which is a student account. So I think one of the other groups that you'll go into is how to log into your MyComNet account today. So there's an alert system that we have. So you would put your phone number, your cell phone, or your text. Um, so you could get a text or a phone call when a uh, the college is closed. So definitely um, do that so you will know. Also, your professors, you know, if they cancel a class, they'll email you, um, usually beforehand, and they'll tell you that the class is canceled, and maybe they'll tell you how to, what to do because of class getting canceled. So, like, read an extra chapter or do an assignment that's due the next class. Um, so they will contact you, um, and yeah, I think yeah, just um, have access to your MyComNet account for the alerts. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, can I ask the audience a question? You sure can. Okay. All right. If you guys are going to ask us questions, I'm going to start asking you guys questions. All right. <laughs> How many people here are coming from high school? Really high, really high. Cool. Uh, how many people here are returning to school or starting fresh but not certainly coming from high school? Really high, really, really proud. That's awesome. That is a really good thing to do. Um, how many people here have their classes picked out and they're ready to go for Monday? Nice, nice, better than me. Um, <laughs> I have a class got canceled, so now I actually have to pick a new class. So I'm not even prepared for classes on Monday. Um, how many people here are going to take the advice that we gave you and are going to put it forward? <laughs> Come on. They gave some. These guys gave some really good advice. I, you know. I gave laughs. These guys gave really good advice. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. So I just wanted to reiterate, um, all of your classes should have a Blackboard shell account, right? So when you get into Blackboard, you're going to see a list of all the classes you take. So say, for example, there was a class cancellation. As um, Hannah noted, it's very likely that your professor will email you, probably through the Blackboard Learning, to give you some kind of direction. But it's also your responsibility to like go on that Blackboard shell and just see if there's an announcement because it, you know a lot of the ways that we professors contact you is through the announcements, right? Now you will get that email if one is sent to your Tunsis email account that you're given. Okay, so you got to check that. All right, if you don't, you know, if you want, you can 
you know, get it so that that email goes right to your phone or that email goes right to another email that you like to check, and that's absolutely fine. But that is up to you to do. Either check the account that we gave you or wire it so that it goes to an account that you frequently check. But when you take a course, you do want, it's up to you to kind of check that out and so that you can receive any communications that we are trying to send you, right? Because it's true, we'll say, well, class was canceled, but here's what I want you to do to make up for that class time. Because unlike high school, we have a whole year to learn something, you know, in college, we got three months. And so we can't just freeze the class and not move forward just because we've got some weather issues, right? And one of the things Catherine Addy wanted me to add when it comes to weather is that the college tries very hard to make the right decision for your safety, right? So we do cancel classes. You know, they get up very early in the morning and they monitor the, you know, the Doppler radar systems and everything the night before. Anytime a storm is due, they really try hard to make the best decision about whether to cancel, whether to delay, whether the, whether to close early so that people aren't driving in unsafe conditions, right? So they try really hard. But on the other hand, you know, we live in New England, there's gonna be some flakes that fall. We can't cancel every time, you know, we see a few flakes in the air, right? So they try to find that balance for you. But check Blackboard Learn and, you know, figure out what you should do if class is canceled so that, so that you stay on task. A lot of teachers give you a schedule of assignments and look at that schedule and say, well, okay, so my Tuesday class was canceled. What would have been due on Thursday? Let me keep up with the classwork and do what would have been due for my next class. That's why they give you that schedule so that you can keep up, right? What we want is for you to be successful and we're trying to work with you to make sure that that happens.